Welcome back to the Super Data Science Series on Seaborn. We are currently set on expanding our knowledge of Seaborn and getting our hands dirty, building some more interesting visualizations. As a quick recap, in the last video, we built a swarm plot that we can see here using the Pokemon dataset. If you haven't downloaded it yet, pause this and go to the previous video and get set up because we're going to be working with it further and expanding on the swarm plot. And also, we left off the last video with a bit of a homework challenge, which was to think of a method to examine a relationship between two variables or columns of our data. And that was, if you thought of it by now and put it together, congratulations, there were some hints in the last video, it was to use linear regression. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. We're gonna to put together a quick linear regression sample and example, and then we're gonna be working on our swarm plot further. So with all that being said, let's get started. All right, so we're back in our Jupyter Notebook. If you haven't rerun everything, please rerun the cells above, especially the import statements, because we're gonna be using, for example, we're gonna use SNS, we need to import Seaborn to use our models. And for the purpose of our linear regression, we're gonna be utilizing the LM plot. Basically, it's with Seaborn, it's intended to fit the regression models across conditional subset of a data set. Simply put, it's a very easy way to use Seaborn and your data to build a regression model. If we scroll over to the LM plot information, we can see the parameters. I hope through the series you're becoming more comfortable with taking a look at the parameters if you have any questions. We're gonna build two quick linear regression models, basically the same, but we're gonna use the hue for comparison. It's gonna be very simple to pass in, and we can see that now. So what's the first thing we're gonna do? Call SNS. Again, we're using LM plot, and this is gonna be a very easy setup. We have to set our X equal to, if we scroll up, let's take a look at the comparison between the attack values and hit points. Sometimes you have a very powerful uh, attack. You might not have as many hit points or you might have a lot of hit points. So let's see how that's distributed. So we'll use our X for attack and we'll use our Y for hit points. Okay. And we also, don't forget, to pass in our data, we had it as the Pokemon data frame. And we could run that, and with, just with this LM plot, it's gonna build our regression model. And as you can see, we're missing a comma. And here we have a regression model. You can see the distribution here between the values comparing the hit points and the attack value. As we can see, the cluster is pretty strong in the center. We have some outliers here as well. But well, one more distinction, if we copy this, if you want to rerun it, you could use it here. But if we move down here and we copy it, we could also set another comparison. We could use the hue and set it to, let's take a look again at our data. Let's use the generation. Since we have some generational difference with the Pokemon, we can use generation for a comparison. We'll set it to generation. We could run it again. The commas today are not cooperating with me. We'll use the generation for our comparison. And here you go. You can see the difference. It may help visualize some, especially with the outliers. But there you have it. A very easy way to build a rapid model with Seaborn to run linear regression on your data. If you haven't, experiment with some other values. You know, you could pass in the comparisons on um, speed, the special attack, special defense, attack, defense, hit points, total. Again, you could use these to run our linear regression models. You can use the hue or set different hues to see if you can change and customize it further. So now that we have our linear regression models finished, we're going to be using our swarm plot, as we mentioned earlier. We're gonna be using it actually in the sense of extending it further, but in a way to extend it, we're gonna be using a combination of plots. We're actually going to be using and building a violin plot over the swarm plot, and it's going to help us show the distribution of our data. What I want to do is pause the video and take a moment to think about how you can build the swarm plot or the violin plot over the swarm plot or vice versa. If we scroll up, you can see how we built our swarm plot. Again, we're looking at the type of Pokemon compared to the attack value. This is how we set up our swarm plot. So we're going to be doing the same setup again with our swarm plot. And we're also going to be building a violin plot. So take a moment. We're going to come back and we're going to set it up. 
For those of you who have figured it out, nice work. For those of you who didn't, that's no problem. We're going to go through it now. We're going to set it up slightly different than our swarm plot in the sense of the building of the plot. We'll be building our violin plot first, then our swarm plot, but you can do it vice versa. So let's get started right now. We could set up a name. Let's call it Pokemon plot. We didn't do this earlier because we were calling it directly, but if we ever want to reuse it and it's a good practice, you can use Pokemon or set a name. We're going to be using Pokemon plot equal to SNS dot again, the violin plot first. And as you know, we have to pass in our parameters. We need to set our X value X equals to, we're going to set it in the same as we set our swarm plot for the visualization type one Y equal to attack. We need to set our data equal to Pokemon df and we'll set our inner equal to none okay we have our violin plot built again we're using the violin plot and the swarm plot together one over the other so what we need to do is also set pokemon plot equal to sns dot swarm plot as we could have imagined we're using the swarm plot and what we can do now is just to borrow these to grab them up to there to pass them in because we're only going to be setting two more we're going to be setting these for customization. We're going to set the color equal to white. And we also want to give it an edge color. And we're going to give it to gray. A little differentiation there. But we can see we're building these plots on top of each other. You can also use them interchangeably. And now if we do run it, I have some RPC parameters set as I was testing the model. Because if you run it now, the visualization, it's not going to be so clear. It's going to be actually bunched up towards the bottom. As you've seen in the previous and through our tutorials, when we work with some of these, we have to set figure sizes, RC parameters. That's the great thing about Seaborn being built on top of Matplotlib. So for this, let's actually first, instead of going back, let's establish our parameters now. We can use the SNS set method, SNS set RC equal to, open that up. We want to use our figure size, so it's going to be figure dot fig size and the following we'll have the closing quotation and we need to actually establish the size where we have 12 by 12 all right so we have that make sure these closing parentheses and the brackets are there so now we have established our figure size it should come out clearly and we should be able to see all the values and the labels without being bunched together so overall what did we do we built a Pokemon plot. We built the violin plot with the swarm plot over it or vice versa. You can run them again in that order. We're using our type one, our attack, the Pokemon data frame, establishing some color for some customizations for our visualization. And we set the figure size so we could see it clearly. So let's run it. Go up, we'll run it. And there you have it. We can see the distribution between the violin plot and the swarm plot of the data points. Just another way, instead of having one singular outlier data of a point, we actually have the violin plot that stretches with our data points. And just another method that Seaborn provides us for data analysis and data science. It's a great method to use. So let's take a quick recap and comparison. We have our violin plot over our swarm plot, using them together. And we can compare it to our swarm plot that we've built previously. Although it's on a smaller scale, we can see the similar distribution. Again, it's just a violin plot stretching over the distributions that we can see here. But the violin plot or the use of them together just makes the data even clearer to, to represent these values within the data set and within the data frame. We also have our linear regression models. We were using different values to focus on them. We were using attack and hit points compared to the type one and the attack of the type of Pokemon. But overall, it just goes to show you can use Seaborn's plots, some of the type of Seaborn plots combined to give an additional representation of data. And what we're gonna be doing in the next video was we're gonna be continuing to expand upon the Pokemon data set. We're gonna be working with a data frame of our Pokemon that we have here, our Pokemon DF. We're gonna work with it and tweak it a little bit to build some more visualizations. If you have any questions, ideas, suggestions, any implementations, please feel free to share them below. And as a final note, please feel free to subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will receive up-to-date and weekly information on what's going on within the industry. It's just really an awesome tool to use to have an idea on all things data science related. And with that, I hope you are learning a lot and enjoying this series. 
We're going to continue building some incredible Seaboard visualizations in the next one, and I will see you there.